Now grab your am jacket, and torch, and go for exterior inspection. Now that we have completed our exterior inspection, let's move on to the pre-flight procedure. First officer. Pre-flight procedure should be carried out, at least 20 minutes before departure. First officer normally does this procedure, the captain may do this procedure as needed. Start from flight control panel, flight control panel, check, flight control switches, guards closed, low pressure lights, illuminated. Flight spoiler switches, guards closed. Your damper switch, up, verify none of the lights are illuminated. Alternate flaps master switch, guard closed, alternate flaps position switch, off, verify there is no other light that is illuminated. Verify, instrument and nav transfer switches are set to normal, all four of them, and EFI switch to normal, as installed. Fuel panel, set, verify fuel valve closed lights are illuminated dim, cross feed selector, closed, valve open light, extinguished. Fuel pump switches, off, verify that center tank fuel pump low pressure lights, extinguished, and main tank fuel pump lights illuminated electrical panel set battery switch guard closed galley power switch on standby power switch guard closed verify standby power off light is extinguished generated drive disconnect switches guards closed verify low oil pressure lights are illuminated high oil temperature extinguished bus transfer switch guard closed Verify transfer bus off light, and bus off lights are extinguished, verify gen off bus light, illuminated. Check, overheat fire protection panel, if this was not done in electrical power up procedure, this should be done once per flight day. Equipment cooling switches, normal, verify that the off lights are extinguished. Emergency exit lights switch, guard closed. Verify that the not armed light is extinguished. Passenger signs, auto or on. Windshield wiper selector, off. Verify that the wipers are stowed. Window heat switches, on. Note, window heat should be on at least 10 minutes before takeoff. Verify the overheat lights are extinguished. Verify that the window heat on lights are illuminated, except at high ambient temperatures. Pitostatic heat switches, off, if the airplane has automatic pitostatic heat, pitostatic heat switches should be on auto, verify, all lights are illuminated amber. Wing, and engine anti-ice switches, off, verify, all lights are extinguished. Hydraulic panel, set, engine hydraulic pump switches on. Low pressure lights illuminated, electrical hydraulic pump switches, off. Low pressure lights, illuminated, but, overheat lights, extinguished. Air conditioning panel, set, air temperature source selector and temperature selectors, as needed. Verify duct overheat light extinguished. Verify, the RAM door, full open lights are illuminated, recirculation fan switch, auto. Air conditioning pack switches, one auto or high. One switch, off, isolation valve, auto. Engine bleed switches, up, APU bleed switch, up, verify, no lights illuminate except dual bleed. Cabin pressurization panel, set, flight altitude indicator, set to cruise altitude, landing altitude indicator, set to destination elevation. Cabin rate selector, index. Cabin altitude indicator, set to 200 feet below destination elevation. Flight ground switch, ground. Pressurization mode selector, auto. Verify all lights are extinguished. Lighting panel, set. Landing light switches, retract and off. Runway turn off lights, off. Taxi lights, off. Ignition select switch, left or right. Alternate the ignition select switch position on subsequent starts, engine start switches, off, lighting panel, set, low goal light, as needed, strobe light, as installed, off, 
position light as needed anti-collision light off wing illumination as needed wheel well light as needed navigation mode selector as installed left or right as needed for navigation system to be used for departure hsi switch as installed as needed select vorils or nav position as needed for navigation system to be used for departure mcp set enter course flight director switch pilot flying side first o oxygen test and set crew oxygen pressure check verify pressure is sufficient for dispatch oxygen mark stowed and door closed we set test switch push and hold verify that the yellow cross shows momentarily in the flow indicator emergency test selector push and hold continue to hold the reset test switch for five seconds verify yellow cross shows in flow indicator verify that crew oxygen pressure does not decrease more than 100 psig if pressure decreases full open oxygen valve and check again release both switches and verify yellow cross does not show in the flow indicator normal 100 percent selector 100 percent static source selector normal marker beacon lights test clock set disengage light test switch hold to one verify light steady amber then hold to two verify light steady red and amber irs must be aligned before carrying out flight instruments check altimeter set airspeed cursor control push verify mode enunciations are correct verify no flags are shown except rdmi flags ground proximity panel check flap gear inhibit switch as installed guards closed verify an operative light is extinguished wide slow pull up wind shear wind shear hydraulic quantity indicators as installed above refill landing gear panel set lever down verify green lights illuminated and all other lights extinguished anti-skid switch guard closed auto brake select switch rto verified as some light is extinguished fuel flow switch as installed reset all other lights except low oil pressure lights should be extinguished engine instrument primary panel set n1 manual set knob push fuel used reset switch as installed push engine instruments check verify primary and secondary engine indication show existing condition fs control panel as installed set decision height selector as needed mode selector map range selector as needed weather radar off verify that the weather radar indication are not shown on the map map switches as needed vhf communications radios set vhf navigation radios set for departure audio control panel set adf radios set hf radios set note do not key the hf radios while the airplane is being fueled injury or fire can occur transponder panel set stabilizer trim override switch guard closed seat adjust use the handhold to adjust seat rudder pedals adjust seat belt and shoulder hardness adjust that concludes the pre-flight procedure first officer while doing pre-flight procedure first officer captain will also be doing his side of pre-flight procedure that procedure is as follows carry out master lights test and dim light test with scan flow pad the fire warning lights are not checked during this test use individual test switches or push to test features to check lights which do not illuminate now go to mcp and set the following course flight director bank angle selected to 25 degrees autopilot paddles off captain's oxygen test and set nose wheel steering switch guard closed 
Standby instruments. Set. Standby altimeter. Set. Standby horizon. Set. Verify no flags are shown on standby instruments. Stab out of trim light. Verify extinguished. Speed brake lever. Down detent. Verify speed brake do not arm light. And speed brake armed light is extinguished. Reverse thrust levers. Down. Forward thrust levers. Closed. Flap lever agree with flap position. Verify flap load relief light. Extinguished. Parking brake. Set. Verify that the parking brake warning light is illuminated. Do not assume parking brake will prevent airplane movement. Accumulator pressure can be insufficient. Engine start levers. Cut off. Stabilizer trim cutout switches. Normal. Adjust. Seat. Rudder pedal. Seat belt and shoulder harnesses. This concludes pre-flight procedure. Captain, now carry out takeoff briefing. Takeoff briefing shall be carried out between pre-flight procedure and pre-flight checklist. If the defined malfunction occurs before 80 knots or V1, I will clearly call out the malfunction and you will call stop or go. If the call is stop, you will apply rejected takeoff procedure. In case of any malfunction after V1, takeoff will be continued. No action other than silencing any oral warnings will be taken, unless the aircraft is safely established in the climb and above 400 feet, a GL. At that point, I will carry out actions on your command. In case of engine fire or failure at or after V1, I will set MCP speed 210-220 knots at 800 feet above aerodrome level or acceleration altitude whichever is higher. If there is no cabin altitude and takeoff config lights the following must be added to the takeoff briefing. For the first flight of the day and following a change of either flight crew member. Whenever, the intermittent warning horn sounds in flight, at an airplane flight altitude above 10,000 feet, mean sea level. Immediately, don oxygen masks and set regulators to 100%, establish crew communications, do the cabin altitude warning or Rapid depressurization non-normal checklist, we both will then verify, cabin altitude is stabilized at or below 10,000 feet, before removing oxygen masks. Do the pre-flight checklist on the captain's command. Captain will challenge the pre-flight checklist, first officer will read, and both will respond in their area of responsibility. 